funny man Johnny Rizzo appeared on my TV talk show a couple of months ago and told me and our viewers a very strange story. Johnny is a comic, but on a serious note, he received this in the mail and he was really taken aback by it, quite surprised by this artifact that you, you got delivered to you in the mail. It's really amazing, uh, Bob, because uh, uh, there are about maybe 4,000 private owners of shrunken heads in America. Really? That many? Yeah, outside of New Zealand. That like would be carnival or circus owners or just private collectors of strange things like myself. I am a collector of strange things, but I never imagined that one day I would have my great uncle Giovanni Rizzo's shrunken head. I, I probably am the only person in the world that has a relative's shrunken head. Uh, my uncle Giovanni, with a little backstory, was. He wasn't an explorer or an Indiana Jones. He didn't work for universities. He worked for circuses, sideshows, and museums. And he would go to South America and different countries and buy weaponry and oddities and strange things, including shrunken heads from a tribe called the Hebrews. And that's uh, the story of shrunken heads. That's a great story. But I don't know anyone, anyone that has their relative. And I heard stories about my Uncle Gio in the carny business, camping out, setting up wagons and rides at night, and we'd sit around and tell stories. Uh, Uncle Gio, he was the guy that brought the Fiji mermaid to Barnum. He was the guy that brought this other thing to Barnum and other stuff. So I like, really, I, I heard so many stories about it. Fascinating. Well, uh, well uh, Johnny, thank you for, uh, for sharing this uh, family artifact oh, with for us. Really appreciate me. it. Thank you. I'm, I'm also getting it checked out by some more authorities, but Yale University has definitely given it the thumbs up. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. To verify his discovery, a few weeks prior to his appearance on my show, Johnny brought his artifact and film crew to Yale University. So, uh, what do we have there? It's extraordinary. The sample that I took from inside is clearly from the epidermis, it's, it's skin. Wow. Um, also, the, the levels of tannins are off the charts. Um, well, if you come this way, I can show you. In a uh, typical tourist shrunken head, like this is one. Is that real? It is a, a real head if what you're looking for is a sloth. Oh. <laughs> uh, so you can see here, again, the the, the patina on the skin is mm. very dark. Mm. In this case, simply painted. Okay. They've used a little ash, a little paint to make it look dark. And the one that you've brought me... It's much darker. It must be older or something, too. It very well may be. The, uh, the quality, though, no. is very clearly one meant for tourist use. The incision on the back of the skull right. is very shallow. It's simply stitched with a running stitch here. Yeah, the more I look at it, the more yeah. fake it looks. But I would have thought it was real if I just first looked at it, you know. Yeah. I probably would have been a sucker for that. So what I noticed in your sample was the, the level of the tannins was extremely high, showing that this was actually made by first making an incision on the back of the skull here. Yeah. We see then that they very carefully have closed this back up. They then boil this head after removing the fat. Right. There's a ball that's placed inside to maintain its shape. Also very unusual and not present in the tourist one is this bark collar. Yeah, so, well, that's something, huh? They, right. well, they sewed the skin right on there, huh? My little prize over there. Let me tell you, I have good news and I have bad news. Well, the bad news is your ancestor must have suffered a horrendous fate. Oh. Um, this is authentic. Absolutely. Every bit of it. And it's a masterpiece of craftsmanship. I mean, oh, wow. I, I'm well, amazed. The stitching is impeccable. And right. do you know how much it takes to create such a I, I, It must be uh, very intensive. I read that it was somewhere between eight hours. Wow. There's so much prep that goes on. Wow. And first of all, you have to harvest the head. And obviously, I can tell this is a European head. Looks a little like a Neanderthal, but he is not. He is a modern European male who found his way into um, that part of the 
worlds and you have to put it on the natives fingers because they really wanted to preserve his head and keep it. And, and, they, and they sewed up his lips? Well, first they removed the bone. See, they opened Oh, there's up. no skull in there. There's no skull. They removed the bone oh. tissue. So a shrunken head a is shrunken, really a shrunken face. You have to you have to shrink it. You have to. Uh. This is all soft tissues processed properly. And they cooked it in. They actually simmered it for a couple of hours. But you have to be careful not to overcook it because then it falls apart and here it comes out. Ooh. Yeah. But you have to make it pliant. And then you go in and you scoop out any skin from the inside out and you stuff it and you dry it and you powder it. Oh, and wow. when it's all done, you can wear it on your belt as a trophy. And clearly, this is a very valuable tra trophy because it's a European style. Yeah, I, I, but what I read, I mean, tell me if I'm right, that there's maybe less than a dozen European heads. Most of them are all native heads. If there are any European heads, they are in high demand because in the, in the 19th century, this is a trophy. Right. Hey, <laughs> this is the Holy Grail of archaeology, uh, seriously. Yeah, yeah. This is what we hope to see in our right, career right and i i noticed that the there's still like nostril hairs and stuff in there like there's still eyebrow hair it is an extraordinary piece that you have here but he doesn't look anything like the natives no <laughs> not to be rude sir but are uh, you starting to catch on he looks like you <laughs> that is the head of my great uncle giovanni was your, At least I'm trying to prove that to people. At was, this was your Uncle Giovanni from somewhere about 100 years ago? Well, in, around 1913 or 1915, between that time period, he disappeared on an expedition to Ecuador. He would purchase um, rare items and unusual things, like shrunken heads, from uh, natives and then sell them to museums and circuses. And I used to be in the carnival business, so I would hear stories about Uncle Giovanni forever. And then this was uh, mailed to me. I see. <laughs> a, lot, a lot more involved in that, but it's really bizarre. Wow. And clearly there aren't that many European shrunken heads because yeah. not many Europeans have made it into that <laughs> right. part of the world. And one of the most famous ones was Michael Rockefeller. He was actually the heir to the Rockefeller fortune. Yeah. And he was, I guess he wasn't interested in the money. He assumed it would come, so he was hunting knowledge and um, secrets and mysteries of the natives. And he uh, disappeared, I read, and was possibly cannibalized or something. His I saw head a documentary could be floating about. around. I don't think this is his head. No, um, no, I don't think so either. I think I know whose head that is. Yes, but there is also a very famous Irishman's head, and his hair is still red. Wow. So the hair stays the, the same. The, it's all the hair preserved. Stays the same. You Everything. Have to, you have to cook it a certain way so the hair doesn't come out. So this is just like a deer head. It'll last forever. It will last forever, but unfortunately we have to confiscate it now because it's really valuable to us. It's a national treasure, so I have to show it to my colleagues. Oh, you, yeah. you can't take you it can have, with you. You can have a temporary confiscation. You could, you could show. We take it into custody. We take it into custody. Uh -huh. We can discuss the terms of compensation. Johnny and crew wandered into a restaurant to get reactions from folks who may have heard firsthand of the Hibero's cultural practices. They still speak Suar, they don't speak Spanish. <laughs> Only Suar. They don't speak Spanish. No? They speak Suar. Suar. What is your name? Myra. Myra. You're from Ecuador? Yeah. I have something special to show you <laughs> from your country. Yeah. Yeah, it's the first time I'm here. Sancha. From the Suari, from the truck and head nurse. Oh, that has to be another part of the Sancha. Which is white Okay, that's yeah. west mm -hmm. of where they are? Yeah, it's very hot. Okay, it's a hot part. So you heard of these? Yeah, I heard of these. Have you ever seen them in your country? But well, this is the Hebrew tribe. The Havaro. Havaro or not pronounced Javaro. Pronounced Hebrew. You have never heard of them? Where you got it? Oh wow. Is it first time I've seen it? Isn't that something? Is that something? I thought I wanted to show it to somebody from 
medical door that might know about it. They can tell me. Maybe my cousin. Bring them over. Jorge. Door? Ah. Sancha. This comes off. Be careful. Sancha. Look. From the Hebrew Rock. Suar. Suar. Yeah. Suar. You know. You, you know what this is, right? You've seen before? <laughs> oh, he did Indians. Indians, yeah. Savage. Yeah. Primitive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna win tonight.